Welcome to Deep Dive. I'm Kevin Benedict, your host, and I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Let me introduce my guest, Dave Foster. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kevin. Good to be here. Yeah. Dave is the Vice President of Data Insight and Operations here at HealthWise, and today we're in Boise. I thought, you know what? I've been taking you to Silicon Valley every week. I thought maybe I'll take the crew back over here to Boise and show off some of the coolest companies in the Boise area. And that's why Dave's here today. Awesome. Yeah, Dave, thanks for cutting out your time here and letting us come in and intrude. But we're in this really spacey room here, too. This all white gives us a really interesting look. So, again, we're going to have fun. Yeah, this is the HealthWise studio yeah. where we produce a lot of our videos that are part of our suite of patient education programs. That's terrific. And that's what we're going to talk about a lot about today. Because one of the key things, you know, all of us, all big enterprises and medium and small enterprises are experiencing digital transformation. That means we use content in a different manner as well. And you guys are the expert in healthcare content. So I'm sure there's been an evolution that you guys have had to go through Absolutely. as well. So why don't we start out with though, but let's find out a little bit about you, Dave. What's sure. your background? Uh, so I'm a entrepreneur. I've started a couple of companies that are uh, media companies, uh, Actually, one of the companies that I founded ended up producing After Effects uh -huh. that was uh, acquired by Aldis and then later uh, Adobe. So many people know it as a Adobe product today. But Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I got my start with uh, computing and graphics and uh, also got really interested in uh, healthcare and technology. So uh, I've done some things in that arena and that's really where I am today. And I really like to fuse together science, medicine, with media and communication, and that's what they're able to do at HealthWise. That's great. And why don't you give us a background on HealthWise? You know, like what's its mission and what are the actual things you produce, kinds of things you produce? So uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit founded in 1975 with a mission to help people make better health decisions. Mm. And we do that by producing media that we then license and distribute to hospitals, health systems, provider groups, insurance companies, payers, those companies that are really trying to help people navigate the health system and get value out of it and get the right care for them. So mm -hmm. our audience is really the public, but it's free to the public usually. Okay. Uh, the information that we produce is part of the care that they're receiving or part of the benefits that they get through their employer or some other entity that, that's helping to finance their health care. And if you guys can see HealthWise's facility here, it's tucked up in the foothills here of Boise in a beautiful location. I've tracked you guys ever since I moved here 20 years ago to Boise. And back then you were doing things like brochures and really thick books. Mm -hmm. And you had nurses, specialists, doctors in the building writing this stuff, giving right. advice creating pamphlets and stuff to be able to, for doctors and healthcare providers to hand. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not advice necessarily. I okay. Mean, it's a very, it has a very specific legal mm. term. Okay. Uh, but uh, it does help clinicians communicate more effectively with the patients and members of health plans that they're serving. And so, yeah, we, we started out uh, doing workshops for mm -hmm. individuals and then producing materials like workbooks that went with those workshops mm -hmm. and uh, ended up producing a handbook which allowed people to make decisions about when to see a doctor yeah so you know my kid has these symptoms should I go to the emergency room or is this something that I can watch and wait at home and take care of maybe within the next day and or who's so. paying for that uh, so again those were uh, very similar to the market that we have today. Okay. Uh, you know, health plans, especially in the 80s. Yeah, so yeah. you may remember uh, HMOs. Yep. Uh, most people don't have great memories of that because the model of care was one size fits all. And they mm -hmm. very much reduced access to care in order to control costs. Yeah, uh, okay. Not very popular. Yeah. But one of the things that they attempted to do was to educate the people who they were serving so that they wouldn't utilize care inappropriately. And ah. it's good for the individual. You don't necessarily want to go to the emergency room. For if, a cough. If Simple you don't cough. need to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Control uh, your asthma in a way that addresses the triggers uh, that you might be having okay. for that so that you stay out of the emergency room. Uh, and then the internet happened. Yeah. So now, you know, in the 90s, uh, 
you know, we were working with a lot of nurse call centers, mm -hmm. uh, organizations that would receive inbound calls from members of health plans and nurses would help people triage their symptoms, figure out, you know, when to go in, when to, when to stay home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we digitized a lot of the content that those nurses were using in those call centers. And we said, you know, that information could also be made available to the members of these health plans online. Mm -hmm. So as these health plans began building out their websites, they wanted the same symptom triage content and Got condition it. content, things that help people understand the treatments that were- So they could reference a link? Exactly. Or people could just self-educate by reading right. their, okay. Yeah. So this concept of information therapy emerged. Our founder, Don Kemper, really promoted the idea that uh, the consumer was the greatest untapped resource in healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got that from uh, Vern Wilson back in the 70s, mm -hmm. who was you know, part of the uh, you know, United States Health Task Force. Uh, and he believed that if you let people self-serve, they can figure out for themselves uh, how to say no for care that's not right for them. Ask for care that's not being made available to them mm -hmm. that they think aligns uh, with the guidelines. Uh, so those kind of things uh, really serve the consumer, you know, all the way back to the 70s, yeah. we're talking, especially true today, where, where people are independently seeking information on Google, through social media, uh, and, and other means. Clinician prescribed information just like medicine yeah. is really powerful, information also can be somewhat prescription strength. Oh, so okay. a clinician, you know, saying, "Hey, I want you to watch this video so that you understand how important it is to take your high blood pressure medicine." So here's a link. All right. Yeah. Or it just shows up on your phone through okay. you know secure messaging. Okay. And uh, you can get the link, and uh, we track the usage of media. Uh, not unlike other media companies do, so that we can give feedback to the providers and, and payers so they see how well they are engaging the public that they're serving. Wow. So, Dave, talk to me about how each of the different stakeholders involved in that ecosystem is getting a benefit from these information prescriptions. Sure. Uh, primarily for the consumer. Yeah. The, the benefit of making a better health decision is that you get the right care for you. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of treatments where the evidence isn't really clear and it's a reasonable option not to do the thing mm -hmm. that's being suggested to you. So, uh, you know, even some things like cancer screenings, uh, you know, for men, prostate cancer screening, in some cases, uh, it's a reasonable option if you don't have family history and so forth to, uh, you know, to maybe not do certain things. Colon cancer screening, mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of different ways to screen for colon cancer now. And, you know, if you're not comfortable with a certain treatment option, maybe the evidence is clear enough that you can, you can choose another option. My doctor didn't give me a choice, Dave. Yeah. Well, it, it was like, you know, snap. <laughs> In your case, <laughs> you know, it, that, that might be appropriate yeah. depending on family yeah. history and different things and what the guidelines say today. Things are changing all the time, you know, as we get more evidence. And so that's why HealthWise has to stay on top of these things, do the critical appraisal and, and make sure that, that it's good. For so the it's, good for the, it's good for the patient. Yeah. They start, they understand the, um, the pros and cons and all the different information a right. little bit better. Okay. Yeah. What about the other stakeholders? So for the, for the provider. It yeah. helps them be more effective. So instead of having to repeat routine, basic information over and over again, uh, they can focus on what's really important for that person. In the office. That's right. So, okay. you know, I, I understand, uh, you know, that you're really nervous about mm -hmm. prostate cancer. You have, let's say, a relative mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, had that condition. Uh, so because you have anxiety, let's talk a little bit about that. And I'll send you the information that you can review later. That you way, can read it at home. That's right. Okay. Can, that, that precious time of connecting yeah. with uh, your patient is something that, that we want to help improve. Okay. So that's good for both parties. Yeah. And then for the people who are paying for this, yes. you know, it's really the so insurance that, providers. Yeah. Well, but who, who pays the insurance companies? Employees. It's the, it's the employers. Individuals, yes. Employees paying, you know, yep. a portion of, of their benefit payment, uh, the government in many cases. So where the funding comes from, those people, they have scarce resources mm -hmm. and they have to make sure that 
only appropriate care is occurring, not over treatment for things that might resolve themselves okay. with physical therapy instead yeah. of surgery, let's say. So we want to make sure from a payment perspective that we're spending the money on the people who really need it and really want it, mm -hmm. uh, not the people who are not going to benefit from these things. And maybe, you know, it's a reasonable choice for them not to do a, a certain treatment. Are there other stakeholders involved there? I, yeah, I would say... Uh, Family just, members probably, yeah. but other ones? Okay. Yeah, definitely family members, but just us as a society. Yeah. You know, we, we have a big problem in this country where the amount that we're spending on healthcare uh, is eating up more and more of our gross domestic product. And uh, the economy is just not going to grow. You know, you see, uh, you know, some people saying, oh, the economy is great. You know, you know, look at all these returns, stock market. But, uh, you know, where, why, why are the wages not uh, increasing. Well, it could be that employers are having to spend more of their resources on health care oh. and they're not able to increase people's wages. I see the connection. Uh, and so, you know, it's it's not good for, for our society to not address some of these. And uh, it's never good to be making decisions not based on logic or not right. based on science. Yeah. So if you guys can educate the market on data, right. that's even better, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that actually gets to uh, my main focus yeah. right now, which is around looking at the data related to how our materials are used. So what are clinicians using at the point of care? Mm -hmm. What are they sending people home with when they're discharged from the hospital? Mm -hmm. uh, what do they send to them beforehand, you know, maybe during uh, a prenatal program mm -hmm. so that they're, they're ready for, right. all, you know, all the things that, that they're facing uh, with a, con a chronic condition that they might have. Uh, so once we know uh, more and more about how the materials are used, we can start to see, okay, do we have a content gap? Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to produce more materials on uh, pediatric inpatient stays? Uh, are we lacking amount, a certain amount of training where we need to train clinicians that, uh, hey, this material is here available to you, you have quality improvement programs around readmission prevention or bundled payments, right. all the different ways that uh, performance is being measured inside of a health system. Uh, those are places where if education can help, you definitely want to be using that education. Absolutely. And it's not just content you're looking at, I imagine. It's like, it, are you able to produce the content at the right time and place? And on the right device. Yeah. So that, the yeah, so the, yeah. you remove the friction from the process yeah. and they're able to get it, read it, consume it as easily as possible. I imagine that's all in your studies. Yeah. The, the consumption of the media, um, this may be the other piece of this. Mm -hmm. Not only are the clinicians prescribing it to people, but are people actually spending time with the materials mm. and how do they rate it? You know, oh. so we, we have... How uh, useful is it? Exactly. Okay. So we have a, a rating scale where people can say, uh, you know, whether or not something helped them, uh, you know, did it contain the information that they needed and so forth. So we get smarter and we make better products. Our customers get better services because, you know, we're constantly looking at yeah. the data to, to improve the service that we're offering. So, you know, that's, that's one big piece of, of the data. Uh, another thing related to the data is showing that education really does move the needle with quality and other ways that organizations are being measured. Uh, you know, ultimately you want to show that uh, you're preventing strokes and heart attacks. Mm. Uh, it's very hard to do that, you know, and say this medicine or this education, you know, actually permit, prevented some bad thing from occurring. Uh, so that's one of the areas that and you're trying focused. to alter behaviors and habits right. and all kinds of things. Yeah. So that would be a challenge to monitor, you know, before and after an impact. And did, was that impact the result of the information prescription given to him by a healthcare provider? Yeah. Fascinating. It is possible. You know, yeah. we, we are working with some researchers and quality improvers who are actually able to show that, Hey, you know what, when you seriously present information to this patient population, and you compare it to the usual care, there is a much higher degree of uptake for, you know, let's say taking a medicine that might help you prevent diabetes or going to the Y and mm -hmm. doing a diabetes prevention program, changing your lifestyle. People don't necessarily know that that's an option for them mm. and that they can prevent full-blown diabetes. But if you do educate them 
uh, it's amazing the, the high degree that people do want to change their wow. lifestyle. So from back in the 70s, 80s, when it was paper-based and brochures, now it's links and it's video right. and it's aimed. Um, talk to us about when you talk to your customers, and we'll come back and talk about who their customers are in a little bit more detail. But when you talk to those customers, they're all usually involved nowadays in a digital transformation of their own. That's right. They're trying to update the way they do their business. Mm -hmm. So what kind of conversations do you have with those companies where you say, here's the latest that we can help you support these digital transformations you're doing? All right. Uh, you're familiar with the 10 year challenge? No. Recently. So it's a social media phenomenon okay. where, you know, take a picture of yourself. Oh, so I've seen ago. a lot of that. Yeah. I didn't know it was yeah. like organized. Yeah, well, I don't know that it's that organized. I mean, there's a... But uh, this week I've seen a lot. Yeah. So uh, kind of a fun thing. Uh, you know, you compare yourself in 10 years. Okay, let's go back to 2009. Where were we? Uh, we'd just gone through this horrible economic crisis. Yep. Uh, the United States government passed a reinvestment act. And a piece of that was the High Tech Act, which was to mm. invest in health information technology. Yes. So electronic medical records that's right. and all that. Why we didn't electronify, it's very complex. I mean, healthcare is very complex. Uh, there are a lot of privacy issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, the industry really needed that nudge from government in order to make the switch. Mm -hmm. That was a big opportunity for us. Wow. You know, the, the internet was great for getting us to go from print to digital. And a lot of our customers were building websites. Uh, the next big wave was the digitization of electronic medical records. And we did a lot of work at HealthWise to advocate for getting patient-specific education mm -hmm. into the requirements for a certified electronic health record. You know, we believe that, yeah. hey, if you're going to fund the development of these things, you're going to start collecting data about people. Yeah. You ought to give them something that helps them understand that data. Yeah. Uh, and so 10 years into the future to today, from then, uh, we've really made a lot of progress. Mm. Uh, a lot of people were saying, this is impossible. You can't do it. It's not scalable. You know, we have 80 customers that are integrating HealthWise into the Epic EMR system. Wow. You know, using... And Epic is used by most hospitals, right? A well, lot of hospitals. A huge yeah. number, yeah. yes. Yeah, so they're a big one. And we have other EMR partners as well that uh, have integrated and standardized on, on HealthWise uh, because we made it really easy for them to integrate because we had the right metadata on mm -hmm. the content. We complied with health IT standards like HL7. So it is possible to, to do those things if if you follow the standards. So walk me through what you guys actually contribute to that. So I'm a patient and I have asthma right. in my healthcare record. Right. What does the integration with HealthWise do for me as a patient? Right. So when you as a patient log into your hospital's patient portal, mm -hmm. uh, it might be Epic MyChart, maybe mm -hmm. another EHR vendor, you're gonna have a problem list there. And asthma is gonna be listed mm -hmm. as one of the problems that you have. And there will be uh, a button right next to that asking you if you want to learn more about that oh, condition. Oh, that's the connection. And so when somebody says, yeah, I do, I do want to understand more about this condition, that sends us an HL7 transaction, uh, stands for Health Language 7, okay. you know, a health yep. IT standard for sharing information between systems. Uh, it comes over to us with the context of it has to do with a condition on the person's problem ICD list. ICD-9 code, diagnosis code. And it's an ICD-10 code for, okay. for that diagnosis. Uh, you, you know, maybe there's a, a medicine. So, you know, we're getting, uh, you know, one of these uh, NDC codes for, for a medicine. And we know that it's a, a medication content. Mm. And then we can respond by saying, here's some information to help you understand the condition or the medicine for that condition. Ah. And it's all enabled by... Uh, the metadata attack. So we don't have to call up our friends and just ask their opinions on these things. You're providing them some logical um, data-driven data that That's they right. can use and learn from. Yeah. Okay. So now Apple, uh, you know, they're utilizing a lot of yeah. these standards to get data out of electronic medical record systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may turn out to be that people start to download their medical records on their smartphones. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to understand it. 
if right. it's just the data in and of itself. Someone what has to help What is this? Them. What do I do about it? That's okay. right. And, uh, and you don't want people calling up the care professionals with questions that the computer with good health education yes. integrated into it can help the person mm. answer those questions. Uh, but we don't want to thwart people communicating with each other yes. either. And we know when it, when it's appropriate, you know, we've read the research that says people do turn to their friends yeah. you know, on social media. Yeah. 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 Hard to believe yes. people turn to their friends. For I've got a rash. Social media. <laughs> what do I do about it? <laughs> but it's true, you know, yes. or it might be, uh, yeah, I, I got something. Uh, can anyone recommend a dermatologist? Yes. Uh, you know, people don't necessarily go to the hospital's website to find out about mm. uh, the care that they're receiving. And uh, some former Googlers that are now helping uh, hospitals do a much better job integrating with maps and other things, uh, they're finding out that something like 80% of patients who receive treatment at a hospital never went to that hospital's website. Yes. You know they're doing something yes. digitally. I mean, Oh, yeah. When I go to a doctor, I bring in what's wrong with me. Yeah. So you're See, doctor, uh, you're I've like, read this. Like, yes. here's some printouts, doctor, if you well, don't know. <laughs> or just to even, like, get the appointment, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. You're, maybe you're not even a patient at yeah. that place. But figuring out, like, where to go, you know, as consumers, we have a lot of online activity yeah. that doesn't even touch kind of the, the old school methods. So I think that's on the frontier uh, mm. for you know, the digital transformation uh, that we're talking about. But you're combining the diagnosis of professionals with data, that, with data and the best advice possible, not advice, but educational content yeah. about what the professional has diagnosed them with. That's right. So that you're, they're getting the best possible information without just, uh, you know, doing their own research and coming up with wrong information. Yeah. There's a okay. lot of dangerous stuff out oh, there yeah. uh, that you can get sucked into and, it's not necessarily evidence based. Yeah. Uh, you know, they might be promoting uh, snake oil type yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, or they just want eyeballs. Uh, wow. You know, it's not really trying to help people do anything. They just want your attention. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, consumers need to be wary of what they're looking at and make sure that the information that they're getting is from a trusted source. So, talk to me about changing patient content consumption patterns. Yeah. Did they used to read the big thick book and look up everything, but now they're looking and they're going straight to Wikipedia or they're going to Google and they're trying to diagnose themselves on that, or are they going more toward video or, you know, what's, what patterns do you guys see out there? Yeah, there's, there's definitely um, a lot of reliance on social media as we were talking about mm. earlier. Um, kind of surprising in this yeah. day and age, but, yeah. but that's definitely the case. Uh, you should not go to Facebook <laughs> for your medical diagnosis. Okay. And Wikipedia, you know, yeah. it seems like a good idea, yeah. uh, you know, until you get out of your league. Yes. You know, um, it's very easy to uh, kind of just keep going and uh, have some cyberchondria, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where, you know, you imagine you have a serious condition when, when maybe you really don't, you know, but certainly get, get things checked out. You know, yeah. we don't want to dissuade anyone uh, from seeing a doctor. But uh, yeah, it's very hard to diagnose yourself or to, you know, uh, you may have seen this hashtag uh, death by chatbot. Oh, <laughs> yes. Someone, you know, recorded, uh, you know, one of these programmatic conversational type things. Yes. Um, which, you know, did, didn't necessarily lead to a good result for, for that example that the person was highlighting. But that is what people want. Yes. You know, they don't necessarily want to, you know, have to go have an appointment mm -hmm. and drive in, take time off work. Oh, yeah. If you could self-serve and self-diagnose yourself. And if it was right, that's probably one thing. But yeah. it's hard to be right. Hard to be right. So, you know, we, we are on triaging people to yeah. the right place and care and when to seek care appropriately. And hey, you know, if you want convenience, now we have telemedicine. Mm, so yes. uh, many HealthWise customers are telemedicine providers. Uh, and at the end of an encounter through a Skype-like mm -hmm. interaction, uh, our information can be provided to reinforce. Here's a link, here's happen. a video, here's where, whatever digital format they need, right? right? Um, Interestingly, uh, some of the scholars who are looking at telemedicine, you know, answering the yeah. question of does this provide more convenient care and actually like save some money because people are paying less for that. Yeah. They're not having to go in. Uh, it's not really 
worn out yet, you know, that it's, that is yet to come. Uh, and one of the issues with telemedicine is that, you know, for something like, let's say strep throat, mm -hmm. uh, can't do a strep test on telemedicine. You do have to end up going in and people skip it and yeah. maybe, you know, don't get appropriate care. So there are some issues that, that we all have to work out, uh, but people want convenience. They want a chat bot. They want so they just need to develop that little electronic arm that says, ah, <laughs> <Right. laughs> let me get a swab, yeah. automatic nail. Or, or yeah. you know, Alexa, <laughs> ship me a, a strep test that yeah. I can do at my house. I don't know if they had those, yeah. but there are, there are some yeah. convenient lab tests that you can do at home. Uh, for cancer screenings and, and yeah. other things, and uh, that may be That's a brilliant. solution to it. That's brilliant for those things that can do that. So all these digitally transformation, uh, tr digital transformation events and um, evolutions that are going on, you guys are matching them up and aligning content with each of those right. to make it a better process. That's just really interesting. So, um, and we've talked about the content consumption and how patterns are changing. What role does video have? Video is huge. Uh, you know, that's why Healthwise built this video studio. Oh yeah, we're in this beautiful big studio, yeah. You know, there was a point where we either were going to license videos mm -hmm. produced by other companies and just include it into our materials. We do that occasionally. Occasionally mm -hmm. we will license third-party produced materials like drug leaflets. Yeah. Um, you know, there are companies that are dedicated to just covering medicines and yeah. they're much better at that than we are. So that's fine. But with video, it really needed to align with all the text content that, that we had. Uh, and we really couldn't make the claim that we're consistent and connected, plain language, high degree of medical mm -hmm. review, all the things that we do to produce excellent, safe, helpful media. We really need to do that with mm -hmm. video. And so we really invested in it. Uh, and we produce hundreds and hundreds of videos in English and Spanish. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, information can be absorbed really quickly by watching a video. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be prescribed to people. So are these long form videos or short form? They're short form videos. And okay. uh, we keep getting requests for shorter, shorter, shorter. Okay. Uh, it, and, you know, at some point uh, it'll be a gift. <laughs> uh, but it's a challenge, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. there's a, uh, a lot of complex information. Um, there are a lot of sensitive issues mm -hmm. that we cover uh, that, uh, you know, it's nice to convey real people in there yeah. because you might be dealing with something uh, that's really upsetting to you as yeah. a person or for your yeah. family member. And so I think it really humanizes a lot of, of these issues to, to produce a video and helps people know that um, they're not alone. Like it's normal for, yeah. for you to uh, be experiencing fear or concern about this type of thing. Mm. So for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to be here in Boise and tour HealthWise, HealthWise is a big, beautiful building again here in the foothills. And part of your title is operations. So talk to us about what goes on in this building. Yeah. It, you know, where do you get this intelligence right. that you put into these educational content? Where do you get that? Right. So we, we have a knowledge management process. Okay. And a lot of doctors, a lot of people with, you know, master's degrees in public health, mm -hmm. journalism, you know, different areas of expertise. And every day they're looking at the literature and they're saying, what's changing? What do we need to communicate to the public about that's different today? Maybe there's a new guideline. You know, maybe there's a new treatment like cancer immunotherapy. Yeah. Uh, how are we going to help people understand things like genomics and personalized oh, yeah. medicine? I mean, it's science fiction. So how fiction many topics happening. do you guys have on your list that you want to keep updated? We, we try to cover everything. Yeah, I mean, there, there are that some... thousands? Is it millions? Is... Yeah, I mean, it's the, <laughs> the whole SNOMED, ICD, wow. you know, is, is, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some rare diseases that uh, there are other organizations that yeah. cover that better than we can. Yes. Uh, but, you know, focusing on the major issues, the major lines of service of a health system, uh, all the chronic diseases, um, you know, right now... One of the biggest things that we're getting is stuff about opioids. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, it's a big problem. We all need to be working on that right now because it's such a big problem. Wow. That they need. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us. And I hope you guys found this topic as interesting as um, I did. And I want to thank all of you for 
tuning in today.